Hi, everyone. This is a first for me, the online genealogy seminar in this way. I hope all of you are uh, doing well and healthy and safe. Thank you for joining me here today. Thank you, Danielle, for the introduction. I'm going to share with you new and cool things that are um, in progress in my heritage and are about to be unveiled and released. We were supposed to have a MyHeritage conference in Israel later this year. We canceled it because of COVID-19. Um, our loss is Igra's gain because many of the things that I will show today are, have never been shared before and you will be the first to see them. I'm going to warm things up a bit by talking about historical record collections and um, then new genealogy features, new DNA features, and at the end, uh, there's time for questions and answers. Starting with uh, historical records, this year our team has been very busy. We have increased our collections by about 10% in the first five months of the year. This doesn't include the last few weeks of June. And um, there are about two dozen collections here. Some of them, of them have been in progress in development for a long time, like the US city directories. Uh, some we have indexed ourselves, uh, such as the Greek records, and particularly lots of Jewish Greek records from Corfu. Um, and as you can see, we are a global company and we uh, process collections and records from all over the world wherever there is an opportunity to bring valuable content to our users, we pursue it. But now I will share with you the new things that are uh, under development right now. And all of these are scoops, never shared before. So you're getting a sneak peek. The first one, and I hope to hear some wows from the audience, is a huge Israel immigration database. Uh, this is based on our work to transcribe images that are in the public domain, uh, published by one of the large Israeli archives, containing all of the ship manifests that survived with the Olim, the immigrants coming to Israel as of December 1919 and up to about 1972. Uh, we are building a rich searchable index that will be great also for automatic matching with family trees and you will get the first name and last name of the immigrants, uh, typically either their um, birth year um, or the age, sometimes a complete date of birth, the place they are coming from, uh, their address, occupation, and uh, very importantly, names of relatives, the name of the ship, when it arrived into Israel, and I believe that almost every Jewish genealogist in Israel and overseas will find um, valuable information about their ancestors coming to Israel or other relatives. Uh, this is fascinating. We already completed about 650,000 records in the index. Um, we estimate that we have 900,000 more to go, so this will cover one and a half million people. It will be a very significant collection for Jewish genealogy. And uh, we hope to release it in two parts. Uh, first part, when we reach half of the collection, certainly later this year, and then when we complete everything. I hope this will be very useful to all of you. We are indexing the collection using an in-house tool that is very flexible, that we've been using also for the Palestine naturalization index collection that allows us to um, input information in Hebrew and English and um, customize it according to the needs of each collection. Another fascinating Jewish collection we are currently working on comes from Vienna, Austria and originating from the Jewish community there. When people wanted to emigrate out and people were very lucky to have uh, been able to do that between the years 1938 to 1940, um, they had to fill out extensive forms and uh, 35,000 of these personal files survived. Um, for each individual, there are about on average eight or nine pages 
All of these have been uh, scanned and we are providing an index, very valuable information about uh, names and dates and places of birth and family members again, and the desired location of emigration. Some of those people ma made it out um, and escaped before the Holocaust, and some of them uh, did not and, and died, perished in the Holocaust, and these could be the last records about them. Uh, this will be an amazing collection, currently in progress. So that was just a warm up about some of the collections that we are working on. Remember that you have been the first to uh, hear about them. There is a lot more that we are doing in Jewish genealogy and also, of course, in non-Jewish genealogy. Uh, dozens and dozens of collections, billions of records that we intend to add before the year is over. But I can't tell you about everything right now, so you will have to stay tuned. Now I'm moving on to um, genealogy features, products, and enhancements. Um, as many of you, I hope, know, the search engine for historical records on my heritage is called SuperSearch. And um, we have been trying to improve it. And we have spent actually a lot of time with the user focus groups and some of our best product managers have been working on improving the search experience for historical records. What we have built is actually already available and live, but we have exposed it only to a small amount of users initially. Um, in technical uh, jargon, this is called A-B testing. You give some of the users the new version, you give the rest of the users the other version, and you can see which version is more successful based on feedback and actual technical parameters. For example, where are users getting faster performance? Where are they doing more searches? Where are they finding what they want faster and viewing more records? So right now, this is in the process of an experiment. And if it is not successful, we will keep improving and tweaking until it is better than what we have today. And then we will release it to all the users. In the um, enhanced search experience, we were trying to solve a particular issue, which is how do we um, prevent the simple form and the advanced form and unify them into one easy, easy to use search experience that has the simplicity of basic searching, but it has advanced sophisticated features if you need them for more savvy users. So the end result is the search form that you see here, where you can put in first name and last name and year of birth and place. Place can be any place, place of birth or death or, um, or marriage or immigration. And then you can add uh, more details as you wish on the father's name, mother's name, or even other relatives. All the um, query, power that you can do today with an advanced search form you can do here but the best news is that this search form follows you when you're looking at the results which you can see on the right hand side as you are looking at records the search form is thin enough to appear at the top of the screen and you can then fine-tune your search and add more parameters or maybe take out some parameters and run the search again. And as you dive into particular collections, this adapts and it asks you about particular fields according to the context that you are in. Um, so this is um, intended to be more friendly to use. Here is an example. Um, when I wanna add more power to the search query via the more button, I can add birth dates or places. I can add other types of relatives. I can specify the gender and I can decide if I want an exact match or not. And you can tweak exact or fuzzy matching of the search in each and every field as well. And this is an example on the bottom right when you're adding birth information, you can specify any part of the date that you wish and when you enter a year, 
we will ask you if you want it to be precise or with plus minus and so on. An important feature, particularly important for Jewish genealogy that we have announced recently are the cross language record matches. I mentioned earlier that MyHeritage allows you to uh, search in one language and the global name translation technology will also find records in the search engine that exist in other languages. You don't need it when you are dealing with Latin script like uh, English or French, but you do need it when there are other scripts like Hebrew or Russian or Ukrainian or, or Greek or Turkish, and maybe in the future um, Arabic and the uh, Asian languages as well. Global name translation technology behind the scenes translates or rather transliterates every name into English. And when everything has common ground behind the scenes, we can match any language to any language. This is an example of a search for Yitzchak Ehrlichman. The search is done in Hebrew, but it is also finding records on Gini that were entered in English and um, in any other location on MyHeritage in any language. Now we have evolved the name translation technology to also work on automatic matches between your family trees and all our historical records. We call them record matches. And now you will get automatic matches regardless of the language of your family tree and the language of the record. This is great for Jewish content in particular because there are a lot of Jewish genealogists who don't speak Hebrew or they don't uh, are not able to read Hebrew well. Uh, until now, this has prevented them from finding some valuable records, but with this technology, uh, hopefully they will be successful as well. Here are some neat examples of real record matches coming from our database. In the top left corner, uh, somebody with a family tree individual called Abraham Cohen received a match to the Ellis Island uh, immigration database um, and can find it, which otherwise this, this match may, this record may have eluded this genealogist. On the top right, you can see an example of a Russian genealogist with a Russian family tree, and this gets matched to a record that is in English uh, about um, a publication, a book that this person was the author of. So the cross-language record matches are a game changer, and now they power all the historical records that we add, which is great news for genealogists. Earlier this year, our one and only Uri Gonen, uh, he's a very, very, very talented individual uh, working for MyHeritage for many years probably a decade and a half. He is like an army of one person doing the design, the definition, the programming, the product management, the enhancement. Um, he developed single-handedly a new view for the family tree called the fan view, which um, has two modes, the color mode and the text mode. It's very convenient to um, take anybody from your family tree and look at their ancestors this prints very well because it's so condensed and it is great for sharing on social media, uh, particularly the color mode. Um, and you can use it to boast how successful you are as a genealogist or point out branches in your ancestry that are incomplete and require a bit more work. Now I'm mentioning the fan view uh, because we already have several views in the family tree. We have the list view, we have the pedigree view, and we have the current view, which uh, for lack of a better name, we call it the family view. And it looks like this. And there's been a lot of criticism on this um, view that it's very inefficient. If you look at the screen, uh, there are big gaps uh, between the name cards. So you have to do drag and drop a lot and pan around if you want to go and find the siblings of your grandparents, for example. This has not been very efficient. Also, I must admit that those pink and blue colors are old-fashioned uh, to denote um, 
men and women. And we wanted to step away from that and do something more modern that is similar, that is going to be very familiar to the users. We didn't want to change things too much. We wanted to use the same structure, but to make it cleaner, more condensed, and it's very similar to the view that we have in our mobile application. So the exact view that you see here right now, the same individuals um, now look like this. So this is before, you can look at Isaac Yaakov Goldman, and this is after of the same family tree. But you will notice that now they are more subtle color hints for men and women, instead of the very large color blobs, and there are far more people displayed on the screen that you saw before, almost double. So this makes more efficient use of your screen, and it means that you will need to scroll, pan around far less. There is actually more information that is being displayed here. We have reduced the size of the cards to add missing parents, and we are giving you the new option to hide cousins. If you want to hide them, then you can easily find the siblings of your ancestors um, because we won't show their descendants. So this diagram will be very, very packed and you will be able to expand any branch that you want to zoom into. But if you do love the option to see everybody all at once on the screen, then this, this remains available. Uh, we have also face lifted the panel on the left hand side and it now has more information it will have the smart matches and record matches, a more convenient display of photos. You can see that previously we showed you only three photos and there was a wasted space for adding a new one. Now we are making use of that space. So we are showing you four. So this is making more efficient use of the screen. We are also adding a very neat option for vertical, vertical cards. They're actually a bit square. Um, it turns out that more of these can fit on your screen uh, because the images, the photos, appear above um, the names. So the, the cards are more narrow. You can see this example of the horizontal rectangles and these are the squares. And you will be given an option to choose which layout you prefer. These are some of the things that you get from the enhanced family tree. It's in very advanced stages and we hope to bring it to you very soon. Obviously it works also in Hebrew and in the 42 languages that we support. Uh, we hope that you will love it. In the process of working on the new tree, and by the way, a huge credit again to Uri Gonen, the one and only, we are building a very nice relationship diagram that you can uh, click anytime you see a relationship. Here in the top left corner, it shows me a grandmother in the tree. That's not very exciting, but this is your wife's grandmother. If you will click that relationship, we will pop this diagram and show you the precise path and we also intend to do that for the DNA matches, where we want to show you how you and someone else is related. Um, this is a very simple example, but it can get very, very complicated and interesting. And you can then print it out, you can save it as a PDF, and you can send it by email to a relative that you're corresponding with to explain to them exactly how you and them are related, which is very, very convenient. This is an example of a slightly more uh, complex relationship. It says another husband of the second cousin once removed his wife. And you can see that from you, you are going up three generations and down to your second cousin, but then it's second cousin once removed and there is a wife and then there is another husband. So this makes sense in very complex relationships. It renders them on the screen very conveniently and you can then save it to your computer and e email it uh, to whomever you are in touch with. Now I want to um, talk about something that I'm very, very proud of, the recent 
photo enhancement features on MyHeritage. We have recently released two very remarkable tools that are based on artificial intelligence, also called deep learning. Um, this is a fancy name to um, algorithms that are being trained on millions of example photos, typically in pairs, when you give them before and after, and the computer learns how to automatically enhance the result. For example, you may ask yourself, how can a computer automatically colorize a picture? If it shows a fruit in a black and white photo, how does it know that this is a pineapple and it's supposed to be yellow brownish with some green leaves? How does it know that it should not be purple with uh, uh, green dots? And the answer is, you teach the algorithms with millions of real photos, including photos that um, feature pineapples or any other object that appears in, in photographs. You provide millions of examples of color photos. And then what we do is we convert the color photos into black and white, and we hand the training algorithm with a black and white photo and the color version, which is the solution, because we started with the color version. And the algorithm learns about different objects in the picture and how they should be colored. And then when you give it a new photo that it has never encountered before, it can say, fantastic, this is a wedding dress. And I know that this wedding dress should be white and it can color accordingly. There are two different um, tools at play here. The first is called My Heritage in Color. We released it about four months ago. Already it has been used 12 million times. It's been extremely popular. And I love it that it has made genealogical photos popular again. Lots of people have been having fun digging up their old albums, scanning them, which is fantastic because when you scan your photo, you protect it um, for posterity. And then they upload it to my heritage and they colorize to share with their family members because it tends to bring the photos to life. And sometimes there is a disconnect with black and white photos, but when it's in color, you can touch it, you can feel it as if this person was living there uh, today. Now, we are never modifying the original photo. The original photo is always intact, so you never lose it. The color version is saved on top of it, uh, beside it, and it uh, benefits from the uh, metadata that you added, the tagging, the place, the title of the photo, the date of the photo and all the other information and the other feature that we released only a week and a half ago is called the my heritage photo enhancer and it can bring photos into sharp focus and this is a problem that almost all of us have with our historical photos um, if you take a group photo uh, that was taken you know 50 or 100 years ago and you enlarge it the faces are going to be small and pixelated and fuzzy and blurry. Uh, no matter what you do, the information is lost. The information is not there. But using this uh, deep learning technology that was trained on millions of photos that were crisp in focus, but then they were defocused and served to the algorithm, the algorithm prepares, simulates, reimagines a human face based on everything it knows about human faces, that is the best match, and that if that face were to be out of focus and blurry, it would look the most similar to the input photo that you provided. So the, the results are un uncanny and sometimes unbelievable. If there is not enough information, the results can be creepy and distorted, so it's not always uh, picture perfect but we have seen a lot of people that this literally brought them to tears. And it works great when you combine it with colorization. You can now take a black and white photo, you can enhance it to crisp focus, you can then colorize it, and you can see two of my favorite examples here of real photos that were enhanced and colorized. And people found this to be amazing. And these are people who, who, knew, who knew these people, um, and often their parents or grandparents, and they knew they were able to testify that the results are um, accurate and believable. So this, this is a wonderful feature. 
any of you have not tried it yet, I warmly recommend that you try. Um, I wrote here the um, pages where you can find it, myheritage.com slash in color or myheritage.com slash photo dash enhancer. The photo enhancer is already viral and there have been about 1 million photos already enhanced uh, in a week and a half. <clears throat> and um, I want to give credit to the MyHeritage developer called Mao Cohen. He came out with the concept of colorization and he found the best technology for this and integrated it into a proof of concept, which was uh, presented in a competition that we do several times a year at MyHeritage to foster creativity and new ideas. We call it a hackathon. This was the winner of the hackathon. We contacted Jason Antic and Dana Kelly, who were those who developed the colorization technology. And um, they were looking for a commercial partner. They were very, very happy that we approached them. Um, and we managed to license this technology exclusively for MyHeritage and help them complete the technology. We even put in some improvements on top of the original technology that they developed. So this is a win-win-win for, for them, for MyHeritage, and mostly for the MyHeritage users. The photo enhancer um, is something that we found in a mobile application called Remini. We uh, thought that this technology should be available integrated in MyHeritage. Sometimes it's inconvenient to use a mobile application because sometimes you have a photo that you want to enhance already on your computer and you just want to enhance it with drag and drop. So we developed a version for this that runs on the web and on the MyHeritage mobile application. And we wanted to integrate it with colorization so you can do both. And I'm very proud of my team that from the moment I asked them to integrate this until this was finished, it was only in a month or two available for you. Uh, I think MyHeritage is now the best place to enhance historical photos. We integrated convenient buttons to enhance and colorize inside the MyHeritage photo pages. So if you upload photos to MyHeritage, all you need to do is click those buttons and watch the magic. This is an example of a photo that was enhanced. And now you can quickly toggle to the before and after versions. You can colorize and don't miss the row of silhouettes at the bottom because this allows you to click any face and see a magnificent amplification of the face to a very, very, very high resolution. And you can share or download these single face enhancements. And this is an example of something that was enhanced and colorized. You can delete the photos, you can delete the enhancement, or you can delete the original. The enhancement cannot live without the original. So, because it always piggybacks on top of it. So if you will delete the original, it will delete everything. If you're not happy with the enhanced, you can delete only that. You can share, you can download the colorized, the enhanced, or a particular face or the entire photo. You can share it on social media. You can send it by email to your relatives. You can send it over WhatsApp or um, share via Instagram or whatever your, social, your favorite social application is. And the original photo is always there. You can always click the before and see it. And you can always delete the enhancements if you don't like them. We um, have the responsible behavior of marking the fact that we have colorized or enhanced the photos. We do that in the bottom left corner. And this is very important so that people who see these photos will not uh, think later on that they were originally taken that way. Rather, they would know that um, this is a reconstruction by um, artificial intelligence. It may not be accurate. Um, and this is very useful to separate fact from fiction. By the way, every time you enhance a photo with Photoshop, you are modifying the original. This is okay. Um, but we think this is responsible conduct. 
we were the first to do this. Um, and now the community has responded positively and we are making these symbols a worldwide standard for such artificially colored or enhanced photos. The feedback that we have been receiving on people, um, from people posting these has really touched my heart and uh, often makes my day. Here on the left is an example of somebody who tweeted, thank you, my heritage, for really bringing to life the grandfather I never met. My mind is blown. This is fantastic. This person could, could never had the opportunity to meet his grandfather, and now he has um, a simulation of what his grandfather probably looked like in his prime, very realistic in color, and often people will testify that the result looks very much like other relatives and that they believe it. On the right, there is an example from Thomas McCanty. He said that he's uh, just trying not to cry. This is one of his prized possessions. It's his mother when she was eight years old. But instead of a small and blurry black and white photo, her face was enhanced and colorized, and he gets a very realistic um, picture of what his mother probably looked like at the age of eight, and this looks like it was almost taken yesterday. So uh, please do try this. I know that some people don't like it. Uh, if you don't like it, you don't have to use it, but I hope a lot of you will enjoy it. And when you share it with your relatives, I can promise you that it can get them more excited, especially with the young generation. And one of our big challenges as genealogists is to continue our work and to get young generation excited about what we do. And I think these photo enhancement features are very, very valuable um, to achieve this goal. I am now moving on to talk about DNA. One of the um, most frequent criticisms that we hear about the MyHeritage DNA tests is that the ethnicity results are um, not as good, not as accurate and that they leave much to be desired. And I totally agree. There are two main features when you buy a genetic genealogy DNA test. One of them is the ethnicity, and the other is the matching, finding relatives through shared DNA. And as a genealogist, I've always put more focus and more attention on finding relatives through shared DNA. And we have evolved my heritage to make it really, really strong in that aspect. We have a chromosome browser, uh, we have auto-clustering, we have very powerful functionality for genetic uh, genealogists. You can download the segment information and use it also with third-party tools like DNA Jetcom and Genomate Pro and uh, others. We strongly support genetic genealogy, unlike some other companies. But here, we've been very hard at work at improving our ethnicity. Um, although I think that uh, matching and finding relatives is more, a more important aspect of DNA, ethnicity can also be fascinating and can also provide genealogical value. We have been working to make our ethnicity the best among all the DNA companies. Later this year and very soon, we will release genetic groups, which is a very, very high resolution feature that gives you um, ethnicity split to between 2,000 to 3,000 geographical regions, including with migration patterns. Uh, we think this will give the highest resolution ethnicity available on the market, specifically taking advantage of the fact that MyHeritage is the most popular DNA test outside of the United States. We have had the benefit of testing uh, millions of people in Europe, in Latin America, in other places, not, not Israel, but through the data and through the family trees that a lot of these people have, we were able to learn about different genetic groups. So from the DNA and from the accompanying family trees, we applied also machine learning and other algorithms. And we are going to release genetic groups to all our users. And this will be a free, free add-on to anybody who was tested on MyHeritage before. You will not need to pay us anything to get those enhanced results. If you were already tested, you will get the enhanced results for free. And I'm going to show you some um, beautiful examples. Um, here, 
is an almost final um, example of the, the user interface, but I'm not showing yet what you will see when you dive in into a particular group and we tell you all about it. We will release this feature in two parts. First, uh, just tell you what your genetic groups are. Then in the next release, we will share a lot of valuable information about the groups that you are a member of, such as the surnames that are common in that group, and do you have them in your family tree, um, the geographical locations. We will show you a timeline with migration information and give you more detailed um, historical uh, description of this group. So uh, here is an example of what the migration routes are gonna look like. This is a particular group of uh, Jews from uh, Casablanca. And this shows the particular locations that they migrated to within the United States, forming a very distinct genetic group. If you are a member of that group, we can anticipate where your ancestors uh, came from. They came from Casablanca, but where also they arrived into the United States. And you can see that Abergil and Abitbol and Abu Khatsila are the most common surnames in this group, which makes a lot of sense. Now I'm showing you um, an internal tool um, developed by MyHeritage. This is not something that we are going to give to the users, but we are using it for classification. Our uh, engineers and experts are going over group by group by group over the 2,000 to 3,000 groups. And based on the uh, geographical information, the family tree information, other clues, we classify them. So on the left, you can see a genetic group called Baghdad Jews. If you are a member of that group, then we predict that you have DNA that was common among the, uh, the Jews of Baghdad. Now, if you know your family history, then you probably already know this, but some people could be adopted um, and some people could have lost touch with their uh, historical background. Maybe they know that they are from Iraq, that they're Jewish from Iraq, but they don't know that they're from Baghdad specifically. So this allows us to pinpoint. The, um, the example on the right is a genetic group called Caucasus Jews in Azerbaijan. It includes the city of Baku, but also Derbent in South Russia because of historical ties. So this is another fascinating example of uh, such groups. We will now have uh, identification of ethnic groups that we have, we and other companies have not until now detected, like the Basque, the Mormons. Um, you may be surprised, but the Mormons have now um, genetic signatures because they often intermarried within their community, um, just like Acadians or Jews. And you can find those signatures and you can now identify if somebody is Mormon and even say from which district in Utah they are from, as in this example. Here is an example of the Sami group, the uh, native population of Lapland in North Scandinavia. And um, we recognize them as a group, we show them on the map, and we show them migration patterns because some of them immigrated to the United States and Canada and other locations. Um, and the, on the right, we see an example of the Bretons, which are interestingly ethnically Celtic, and they are very closely related to the Scottish, Welsh, um, and Irish populations, but they live in Brittany in France, and we can detect them very, very well um, in their DNA signatures. This is an example of a genetic group that are Italians from Campania who went to New Jersey which is quite fascinating. So genetic groups is coming later this year, and we are going to get this ready before the holiday season. So if you wanna buy a Christmas gift to a, a loved one of a MyHeritage DNA kit, it is going to include this functionality, and it will be also uh, fascinating for your own research if you are using MyHeritage. You can also upload your DNA to MyHeritage if you have tested uh, somewhere else. Um, so this is the exciting genetic groups feature in very final stages of development. And I think we will enhance it later on uh, because the MyHeritage DNA database is constantly growing. 
And probably the next update after that is gonna have 5,000 genetic groups. But first things first, we will start with this release and take it forward. So um, this is what I wanted to cover in this session. New historical records. I gave a focus on those that are of high interest to Jewish genealogists. I showed you um, new genealogy tools and new enhancements in the family tree. There is a lot more that I have not shown you because I wanted to share only things that are on the close horizon and very, very close to being released. I want to promise you that as in the last 17 years, my heritage and myself, uh, we love genealogy. We are devoted to advancing genealogy. The fact that we are also developing other things like health tests and doing a coronavirus lab for humanitarian reasons is not because we want to move away from genealogy. We want to build on top of it. Genealogy is always going to be our core and our main focus. And, um, and this is really my main love at my heritage and what we will continue doing. I think, I hope I have convinced you that the future of genealogy is bright and I hope you will enjoy all these features. Thank you. And I'm happy to take questions. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Gilad. Now everybody knows why it's so exciting to work at MyHeritage and to be able to be part of all these things. Um, I have uh, uh, activated the unmute feature for people in the, in the room. Um, there is a couple of questions in the chat in the meantime. Uh, people that want to know if the genetic, genetic groups will help somehow the Ashkenazi Jews. Are we going to be able to pinpoint specific areas where we are coming from? Okay, this is a fantastic question. We tried very much to break the cluster of Ashkenazi Jews. And we did see in the data that Ashkenazi Jews uh, break into several subgroups, but there has been a lot of migration and a lot of uh, you know, tra traveling. And so the it's very hard to find a group and say, these are the Jews of Belarus or these are the Jews of Poland. So we will have some large clusters of Ashkenazi Jews, but it's not going to be unfortunately very, very pinpointed. We're not gonna tell you that this is Eastern Galicia from looking at your DNA, um, but I hope that we will, we will be able to do a better job in the next release. I, I can tell you, like reading the chat, uh, people are really astonished. Uh, and people know me also that I am uh, very honest. Uh, I learned today a few things that you kept as a secret, even from me. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm very happy to be part of the MyHeritage family.